Wow, what what a what a special what a special special night. What a special time for us to gather together. You know, there's two things that I know about every single human in the room right now. That is one, you either really love Jesus or two, you really love the person that you came with tonight. Because in Louisiana, we don't go outside whenever the wind chill is below 10 degrees, okay? And so I know you either really love Jesus or you really love that person that you came with tonight. But tonight is a, a very, very special night. It's the night that we we remember and we reflect on the Christmas story. And the Christmas story is simply the story of the birth of Jesus. And and you know, the interesting thing about the story is that the Christmas story, the story of the birth of Jesus, it really tells us a lot about God. It tells us so many things. When we, when we really dig into the story, part of the character and the very essence of God is revealed in the story. I mean, let's just think for a moment about where everything happened. In a manger. God could have done it any way that he wanted, anywhere that he wanted, but his baby boy, his only begotten son, was born in a stable. Where it, it, it matters about the story. And not just the where, but, but the when. You see, when Jesus was born, it is believed that there was 400 years of silence in the Bible. We last recorded word we have is in Malachi of the Old Testament. And then there's 400 years where there seems to be no prophecies, nothing spoken, nothing really happening. And after 400 years of silence, he shows up. He didn't show up when everything was going right and going good. And man, there was momentum behind the people of Israel. No, he waited 400 years of silence and showed up whenever they were an oppressed people under Roman rule. You see, where God shows up, it, it matters, tells us something. When God shows up, it tells us something. And not just the, the, the when and the where, but the how. How did God enter into the world? He chose to enter into the world through a chosen vessel, a, a teenage Hebrew girl is how he chose to come into the world. And then we say, and who God included in the story? There were those three, those three little shepherds we saw here. The people that God included in the story. God included the shepherds. And whenever we take a look at the who and the when and the how and the where, this is what we see. We see that God chose a very common place. A place that people would walk by just in their normal daily life. It wasn't a palace. It wasn't a place of grandeur. No, it was a simple manger where the animals would rest at night. We see a, a common place. And, and then we also see a common day. There was nothing special about this day. There was no parades taking place. There was nothing. No, it was a common day that Jesus came into the world. And then we see that it was just a common person. A common person, Mary, who God supernaturally chose to be the one to give birth to his son, but she was just common, not born of royal lineage, having no pedigree to speak of. She was just a common person. And then who else does God include in his story but just common people, a common group of people, shepherds, who are just taking care of their sheep. You see, I believe in the midst of all of this, we get such a beautiful picture of the heart of God. And you see, the God that we read about 
in Luke, as we read the Christmas story, this God who orchestrated all of these things, this place and this day and this time and the who and the how, this God who orchestrated all of that, he's still the same God today. What does that mean for me and you? It means that he still shows up in common places. He still shows up on common days, just ordinary days, and God invades our space and our place, and it was completely unexpected. And God still uses common vessels. He still uses common people to bring heaven to earth. And God still reaches out for common people just like the shepherds. The Christmas story really give us a picture in to the heart of God. And tonight, in just a few moments, I I just want us to take a deeper look into this story to take away three lessons that we can really learn from the shepherds the story of the shepherds in Luke chapter two. It says that night there were shepherds staying in the fields nearby, guarding their flocks of sheep. Suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared among them and the radiance of God's glory surrounded them. That night there were shepherds staying in the field nearby. Nearby what? Nearby the birth of God's one and only son. You see, one of the things that the Christmas story tells us is that God was closer than they knew. God was closer than they knew. And it wasn't just that the baby was born close by. The announcement came from an angel who just showed up Boom, there he was, and all of a sudden, God was with the shepherds. God was closer than they knew. They did not know they were next door to the manger where God's son was just born. They did not know that there was an angel right there with them, but God was closer than they knew. New And the Bible says that they were just guarding their flocks. What were they doing? They were just doing their job. They were just carrying out their normal daily task. And sometimes isn't that where we can find ourselves? Just doing our normal thing, going about the normal rhythm and routine of life. And we can so easily forget how close God really is is that God is so close. The Christmas story tells us that God is closer than we even know. It says then that the angels showed up and the the, the radiance of God's glory surrounded them. And the Bible says that the shepherds, they were terrified. But the angel reassured them and said, don't be afraid. I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all people, the Savior. Yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David. And you will recognize him by this sign. You will find a baby wrapped snugly in strips of cloth lying in a manger. Suddenly, the angel was joined by a vast host of others, the armies of heaven, praising God and saying, glory to God in highest heaven and peace on earth to those with whom God is pleased. You see, not only was God closer than they knew, God was also greater than they imagined. God was greater than they imagined because when God showed up, they were terrified. Now, I don't know if we have any other scaredy cats in the room like myself, but I can tell you the reason that you get terrified is because you were not prepared for what just happened. And they were not prepared for that angel to show up. They were not prepared for the glory of the Lord. And the angel 
showed up and the glory of the Lord shone around about him and the shepherds were terrified. Why? Because although they had heard all of the stories about how great their God was, how great Jehovah was, whenever God entered the scene, God was greater than they could have ever imagined. God was greater than they could have ever imagined. Imagine, and it wasn't just the bright light, and it wasn't just the appearance of the angel. It was also what the angel said. The angel said, I'm bringing you good news that's going to bring great joy to all people. <laughs> you know, they're thinking, well, okay, well, what about our people? I mean, our people need some good news. The, the Jewish people, the Hebrew, we need some good news right now. But God was so much greater than they even imagined. Because this good news wasn't just for their people. This good news was for all the people in the world. And then the armies of heaven show up. If the one angel wasn't enough that already terrified them, come on, you know they got another little shiver in their soul. When all of the, the heaven's hosts showed up and began to sing in concert together and to begin to sing about Peace on earth for all of those who are in relationship with God? Wow. I mean, we can live with peace on this earth? God's greater than we can imagine. He's going to bring joy to all people. And for people that are in relationship with him, they can live with this peace God is greater than they even imagined. And then the story goes on. It says, when the angels had returned to heaven, the shepherds said to each other, let's go to Bethlehem. Let's see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. They hurried to the village and found Mary and Joseph. And there was the baby lying in the manger after seeing him. After seeing him, the shepherds told everyone what had happened and what the angel had said to them about this child. And all who heard the shepherd's story were astonished. But Mary kept these things in her heart and thought about them often. The shepherds went back to their flocks, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, and it was just as the angel told them. You see, the, the story of Jesus' birth, the, the story of these shepherds, it shows us that God is closer than we know. It shows us that God is greater than they ever imagined. And also, God is broader than they thought. God is broader than they thought. The table that God lays is bigger and broader than they thought because in the Old Testament, there were Levites and priests who were responsible for the ministry part of the community. And as we begin to read in the early New Testament, we see that there were these Pharisees, these religious leaders who would be teaching the people about God. But I have a feeling that these shepherds never thought that that could be them one day. But what they learned about God is that the table that God lays is so much bigger and so much broader. And they begin to share this good news. And when they share this good news, remember, these were, these were not professional communicators. These were not people who had been trained in the synagogue. They ha had no degree and had no pedigree. And yet the message that they had received from the angel, when they shared this message, people were astonished. They could not believe the message. And don't you know that the people couldn't believe that the people were listening to them? God was so much broader, so much bigger than they thought God was. Could God use the Pharisees? Could God use 
the priests? Could God use? Yeah, 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 yeah. But could God ever use me? No, I'm just a shepherd. I just keep watch over my sheep. God was broader and God was bigger than they thought. You know, I don't know what your 2022 has been like. I don't know what your life has been like. There's a few things that we glean from the story about God that I think are vitally important for each and every one of us. And the first thing is this, that God is close. God is, God is, God is really close. And if you came here today and like you really don't know about the story of God and you're really not in relationship with God, like, I mean, I don't really like really mean to like freak you out, but like God is like really close here. Because <laughs> the scripture says that where two or three are gathered, there he is in the midst of them. And there are at least two or three people in the room who believe. And so God is here. God is close. You know, I've heard people say, oh, pastor, you know, if I ever came to your church, God would leave. No, 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 actually. Actually, you can't run God off. <laughs> no, God's close. God's close and he's probably closer than you even know. Second thing that we take away from the story is not only is God close, but that God is great. God is great. When the angels came with the announcement, this was their announcement. He is the Savior. He is the Messiah. He is Christ the Lord. He is the one who will forgive the world of their sin and their transgression. And not, will, not only will he cleanse all of the wrong, he will bring great joy and tremendous peace. That's who our God is. Our God is great. So you need to know tonight that the God who is close is also a God that is great. He's a God that can forgive you of your sins and give you the peace and joy that your heart has always been longing for. Not only is God close and not only is God great. Finally, God is really big. And he doesn't just offer you like a seat at the table. He doesn't just offer you a seat. He actually gives you a mic. And you would think, well, wait a minute. I mean, you, I mean, I mean, I mean Pat, you don't really know me. Like, you don't know really what I've been through. You don't know really what. I mean, I'm just coming here because, you know, I came with somebody and they invited me and it was like Christmas time and I thought like this would be a good idea. And so like now you're telling me like not only does God give me a seat at the table, like I can be in the family of God, that my sins can really be forgiven, that I really can go to heaven one day. But, but you're trying to tell me right now that God doesn't just give me a seat. God also gives me a mic. He gives me a megaphone to share this good news. Yes. Yes. Because that's what the Christmas story tells us. That God will use anyone and God will use everyone who is willing to share the greatest story ever told. And the greatest story that this world has ever known is the story about what happened 2,000 years ago when God entered into this world. God is close. He's close to you. God who is close is also great. And that great God is a table that's so big that not only do you get a seat, you get a mic, you get a job, you get a purpose. And you can begin to tell other people about the great God that you encountered. And guess what? When you do that, the same thing that happened with the shepherds happens with us. People are astonished to realize this God is close. 
this God sees me, this God knows me, this God is willing to forgive me, this God is willing to come and walk with me. He is Messiah. He is Lord. He is great. He gives peace. He gives great joy. They will be astonished whenever you share the message of God's grace and the message of God's love. Will you bow your heads with me tonight? A common place. <laughs> there might be no more common place in America than a church. Three years ago, a George Barna study said that Shreveport Bossier was the most churches in America per capita. Nothing more common in our city than a church. It's a common place. It's just a common day. <laughs> it's, it's a common day. It's just Friday. It's just a Friday in December. It's a common day. This is a common place on a common day. And maybe you're sitting here thinking, we're just common people. That's right. We are. I'm just a common person. We are just common people. But it is in the common that God shows up to do supernatural things. And in this common place, on this common day, surrounded by common people, you need to know that God is close. That God is great. And the table that God lays for you is so big, he doesn't just give you a seat. He gives you a job to be his spokesperson on the earth, to tell others about what you've seen, to tell others about what you've heard, to tell others about what you've experienced, to tell others about the good news that brings great joy to all people. As your heads are bowed and your eyes are closed tonight, in this common place, on this common day, surrounded by common people, maybe God wants to do something uncommon in your life today. And the uncommon thing is that he wants to reveal himself to you and say, I am closer than you thought. I am greater than you ever imagined. I can forgive every sin. I can give you a brand new start. I can give you peace for every bit of chaos in your life. I can allow joy that is supernatural to fill you to overflowing. I am that great. God is that great. And then God wants to say to you, and I'm that big and that broad that I don't want to just put you down at the end of the table and say, oh, wow, well, you just made it in. No, 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 no. I want to use you as my spokesperson because God always uses common people for uncommon, supernatural, and holy things. On this day, in this common moment, do you want to say, Philip, I need this God, this God who is close, this God who is great, this God who will not just give me a seat, but will 
allow me to be a part of his kingdom. You say, Philip, that's what I need in my life this Christmas season. This lesson from the shepherds. And I want to take this God who is close and I want to make him my God. And I want to take this God who is great and I want to allow him to forgive my sins and to give me peace and joy. And I want to take this God who is broader and bigger and I want to allow him to use me to share with others about what he has done in my life. That's you tonight. And you say, Philip, I need this God in my life. I need this God in my life. Right there where you are, I'm not going to ask you to stand up. I'm not going to ask you to come forward. But just so I know who I'm praying for tonight, you say, Philip, you are talking to me tonight. I need this message and I need this God. Right there we are. We just slip your hand up in the air right there we are. Say, I just need this God. I need this message. I need this God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Come on all over this place right now. Can we all just say this prayer together with those who lifted their hand? Can this Christmas season, let's let's just let's make this confession and this prayer together. Will you say this after me? Say, Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for coming to this earth 2,000 years ago. Thank you for bringing this good news story. For letting us know that you're a God who is close. For letting us know that you are God who is great. And not only do you give us a seat, but you give us a mic. You give us a purpose. You give us an assignment that we can go and simply tell others about what we have seen, this news that we have heard, and what we have experienced. Father, I thank you for each and every person in this room who lifted up their hand a moment ago and said, this, this is the God that I need in my life. Father, I pray that during this Christmas season, God, that you would be closer to them than they ever imagined possible. That you would fill them with peace and joy like they have never experienced before. And God, I pray that they would know that not only do they have a place in the family, not only do they have a seat at the table, but God, you want to use them for your purpose and for your glory the same way that you used the shepherds in the Christmas story. God, we thank you for this truth. We celebrate you and all that you have done in our hearts and in our lives. And we give you glory. Come on, can we just worship the Lord as we close this?